at the Faulkner Performing Arts Center tonight, enjoying the opportunity to listen to the rehearsal for the Christmas performance. Dr. Murdoch and his inspirational chorale, oh wow, it's a stunning and surreal experience. If you're not in the Christmas spirit, oh, you will be now. Here with Dr. Murdoch, we're here at the Faulkner Performing Arts Center uh, to talk a little bit about the inspirational chorale. Can you give us a little bit about the history? Yeah, I'll tell you, um, it is the longest running diversity initiative here at the University of Arkansas. And so uh, we celebrated 40 years in 2017 with a huge concert. The Inspirational Chorale was founded in 1977. Um, it was founded as a diversity initiative. Initially, it was a registered student organization, we call it RSO for short. Um, and so the organization was where students of color um, would come together and they would kind of commiserate because the population of African-American students in 1977 wasn't great. Um, and they were able to meet together to talk about their experiences on campus and to sing gospel music. Gospel music was what united them, what kept them grounded, uh, and what helped them in their matriculation here at the U of A. Uh, over the years, the group has evolved. It was, like I said before, it was an RSO to begin with. Um, it is now a course-bearing class where students can take the inspirational crowd as a credit, uh, music majors and non-music majors. Um, the group is obviously uh, more diverse now than it has been uh, in the past, which we love. Uh, and so now it's a place where students from all ethnic backgrounds, from all religions, from all races can come together and sing this music uh, that has become so um, integral to our, to the African American tradition. So how is this different from a traditional concert choir? In many ways it's very different, but in other ways it's not. Um, so we come together, like I said, it's a course. Um, in your traditional choral ensembles, the students will uh, receive sheet music and they will learn the concert you know, directly from the page. And um, there is a particular style of singing that goes with singing what we call Western choral music. Um, and so most of the choirs here at the University of Arkansas subscribe um, almost exclusively to that genre. So um, the Scola Cantorum, which is a phenomenal uh, ensemble consisting of about 40 students. It's our, it's our premier choral ensemble conducted by uh, Dr. Stephen Caldwell. Um, and so uh, they are one of the best choirs in this region um, and so at, at what they do. And so uh, what we aim to do with the Inspirational Chorale is to offer something a little bit different. Uh, we, do, do, we do perform a little bit of the traditional music, but there are also times when I walk in and I'm like, okay, sing this part, here we go, ba ba ba, and they go, ba ba ba, back to me, right? Do you think you guys have something really unique here, or, or is this kind of a, a bigger thing in the South, or is it something really unique and niche? Well, gospel music uh, began in the South. Um, arguably in, in Mississippi and in Memphis and so, and then kind of spread out. So gospel music is prevalent in black churches in the South and throughout the country. Um, and there are movements throughout the world for gospel choirs as well. I've, I've taken um, gospel choirs on tour to Spain and Portugal and, and to Italy. And, and those people eat up that kind, this kind of music because it's new to them. Um, there's a huge gospel uh, resurgence in Korea uh, and in Japan and in China. And so um, it's, all, it's all the, the rave now. Uh, but when it comes to the collegiate campuses, um, gospel choirs being um, raised to the level of uh, credit-bearing ensemble, um, those, those programs are few and far between. And what I appreciate about the opportunity here at the University of Arkansas is that the, the stakeholders and the deans and the department chairs and those who have bought into the vision here are aware and they, they, they have found value, educational value in what we do here with uh, gospel music. We are one of about five programs in the country um, and we are the only one in the South. So uh, there are other collegiate gospel choirs that are, um, that are led by uh, faculty in Arizona, in Colorado, in the Northeast. We are the only one in the South. And, and um, I think we have a long way to go because I think that there is some value and richness in the history that goes along with this music. And hopefully, um, with, even with some of, the, some of my research plans in the next five to 10 years, um, we, can, we can move toward really exposing uh, black music, uh, not just gospel music, but black music in general for what it is. Um, arguably, black music is the is one of the only authentic forms of music that were that's birthed here in America, right? So we have 
we have classical music that came from Europe, right? We have um, all these other things, but, but all these genres that we have now, even some of the music of Appalachia, all that stuff comes from the influence of the African diaspora. And so I think it's important when we talk about music in America, when we talk about authentic American music, that we can't leave out the story of black people because, because black people were the, uh, uh, the origin, essentially, of all authentic American music. What are the performing uh, pieces like? Do you perform every quarter? Is there, you know, where can, can you guys be seen? The inspirational chorale is typically all over the place. So um, one of the things that we enjoy doing is being a part of the community. And so we work really hard to um, infuse ourselves into the happenings in Northwest Arkansas. So you can find us at Martin Luther King events. You can find us at um, Black History Month events. Um, local churches will call us and ask us to do concerts. And we've sung for Walmart and for Procter & Gamble and for all of these places uh, because we think that uh, in addition to keeping the Black sacred music tradition alive, um, our motto is to inspire in word and deed wherever we go. And so we like to bring that light, to bring that inspiration wherever we go. So outside of campus, you can find us in any of those places. On campus, we typically do two to three concerts per semester um, uh, here at the Faulkner Performing Arts Center. This is our home. Uh, and so uh, this is where you'll find us. With the seasonal Christmas show coming up, what do you want people to take away from it? What is, what is the impact you, you see? Man, it's Christmas, and so sure. like every um, every year at Christmas time, there's all this like hustle and bustle, and everybody's moving, and it's like bye bye bye, and spin spin spin, and like all these things, and then Christmas Day happens, and we for, like the, then we're on to the next thing, right? Um, and particularly us as musicians, right? So like Christmas is over. I was in a staff meeting at my church the other day, and it was like. Easter is in four weeks. And I'm like, hey, can we, can we get through Christmas first? But I think what's really important for me um, with regard to this concert is that people leave feeling the spirit of Christmas, a spirit of love, a spirit of giving, a spirit of hope, a spirit of togetherness, a spirit of unity, a spirit of peace that often gets lost in the hustle and bustle. And so I'm hopeful that our concert um, that the experience that um, our patrons will get on Thursday night will have people leaving full of the spirit of Christmas. We just hope to inspire.